Today, a Dutch court found Alexei Pertsev guilty of money laundering for creating Tornado Cash. Tornado Cash is a privacy preserving smart contract on Ethereum where people can deposit cryptocurrency into Tornado Cash and then from a different account withdraw that cryptocurrency. And no one will know that they were the ones who deposited that liquidity in the first place. So you can see how this can be abused by people who want to launder money or hackers or whatever. But essentially, all this dude did, he created this protocol and he is found guilty of money laundering, even though he wasn't the person who did the money laundering, it's people that used his code. So how does this work? So Tornado Cash works by using Merkle trees, more specifically, intermediate Merkle trees. How does this work? So every time you deposit liquidity on Tornado Cash, you're essentially adding a leaf to the Merkle tree that is stored inside of Tornado Cash. So a Merkle tree works by you have these leaves and there are hashes, the leaves are hashes. And what is a hash function? So a hash function is essentially you can have some sort of text and every time you change the text, it has a unique string that is the hash. So every time you change it, it's gonna be completely it's deterministic, but it looks random. So you deposit, you send your liquidity to Tornado Cash, it creates a hash, and you insert that hash into the tree as a leaf. And so these two leaves are hashed to this node, and then these two nodes are hashed and it creates the Merkle root. So every single time you add liquidity to Tornado Cash, you're updating the Merkle root that's stored in Tornado Cash. So then what happens? So then you go to, you deposit your liquidity and then you go to a different account and you can prove that you know that you have, you know that there is some hash here in this Merkle tree and you can prove that you know that this hash exists, this leaf exists in the Merkle tree for a given Merkle root. So, and you can do this in a zero knowledge matter, manner. So essentially what Alexei Pyrtsev did, this is some code that I recently wrote for a privacy voting protocol, but it's exact, it works exactly the same way. You're proving that you know a leaf in a intermediate Merkle tree. You know the hash of a leaf in an inter intermediate Merkle tree. So, and this took 31 lines of code, and this is written in a language called Noir, which is a domain specific language for zero, writing zero knowledge circuits. So I can prove that I know a root, it's a public function. So everyone can see that I have some sort of root and then all this is private. And essentially I can prove that I know something without revealing anything about what I know. It's kind of abstract, but that's how zero knowledge circuits work. Zero knowledge proofs. So essentially in a zero knowledge manner, I can prove that I deposited liquidity to, to Tornado Cash. And then from a different account, I come with that proof and I give that proof back to the smart contract and the smart contract can be 100% sure that I actually know a hash pre-image for a leaf that is in this Merkle tree. And so that's all Tornado Cash does. Literally is all it is, it's how it works. And so a Dutch court found this guy who I met in Moscow in 2021, he was at a hacker meetup. They found him guilty for doing math, for writing code. And essentially here's 31 lines of code, which, you know, let's say some hacker person, some, you know, illegal activity people start using this 31 lines of code. Does that make me a criminal? I don't think so. So. I see this as honestly, what in the world? This is, this is ridiculous. I feel like this is an injustice and the Dutch courts do not understand that privacy is not a crime. 